DeWalt came out with a new 2X 20 volt, 21 and a half inch brushless lawnmower. They have it in two different models, a standard push version and a self-propelled version, which we have here. We're gonna put this self-propelled version through its paces to give you the worst case scenario on what it'll do for you. And we're gonna let you know everything it does good and everything it does bad so you can make the decision of, is this the right mower for you? Stay tuned. If you've been looking at a lot of different battery operated mowers, you'll find a lot of them have plastic decks. Not this new DeWalt 2X20. It has a steel deck, which is nice, and it also has its self propulsion up in front, which is different than many of the others that put it in back. That has its advantages and disadvantages. This unit does take two batteries, so you can use anything from your DeWalt 20 volt line or your DeWalt flex volt line. Now I'll recommend that you stay up in the higher amp hour batteries because this one will actually take whatever smallest battery is in there and whenever that smallest battery drains and goes away and is dead, the other battery will be left with some charge and the mower will not work. It needs two batteries to run. Now you have three different ways of mowing with this. You can side discharge, you can mulch, or you can bag. So what we started out doing was mowing with its side discharge going to get an idea of how long this is gonna run in a worst case scenario. Flat out, I'm gonna probably say this a couple times in a row, worst case. Now DeWalt advertises on the box, you can get up to 60 minutes of runtime. And the way I believe that they do that is they take this mower and they set it up on stands, let it mow basically, or let it just run it takes about 60 minutes to discharge the batteries with zero resistance. Now in this case, I'm mowing on level five, which this has six different uh, settings to mow. So I'm about three and a half inches of mowing height and I'm cutting grass that is well over six inches tall. So this is the worst case scenario here of someone let their lawn grow a little bit too long. Can this battery operated mower do it? And it sure can. What suffers is not the cut quality because this mower will ramp up in speed as it feels more resistance on the motor and ramp down when you're not cutting a lot of grass. So what happens here is our runtime decreases and we ended up with 22 minutes of runtime and we accomplished a 33 by 270 foot section of mowing. So you can take that and equate it out to square footage. You can you know, measure it around your yard, but that is approximately what you're gonna get on two batteries, 10 amp hour, in the worst case scenario, flat out. That was pushing this lawnmower, it was at its high speed all the time, but it cut well. And that's one thing that all the DeWalt mowers that we've seen, including the 60 volt models of the Craftsman line that are sold at Lowe's. So the cut quality here was excellent. Just the runtime was shorter with taller grass that we're cutting. Now again, worst case scenario. So what I wanted to do is check out another worst case scenario and see how well it will actually mulch grass if you're in taller grass. Now this is even taller grass than before. And the only issue that we have with this unit mulching this grass is that we get some stragglers on the ends of the sides, I guess, of the deck where it's not completely cutting them. But if I were just to move over slightly and overlap another half inch, it would suck those up and cut them down and it would have a perfectly cut system. I really, really think that this unit is one of the better ones out there, even, even over the dual blade models that we've looked at from other units, and it really just cuts like a gas mower would. And I don't like to compare gas and battery because they really are not the same, but as far as cut quality, this DeWalt is right up there with many of the others that uh, just really rock it. And I'll put this up against any dual blade that's out there for good cut quality. Now, when we went over to bagging, again, absolute worst case scenario, I'm cutting through at least eight, nine inches of grass here, but it's not super thick. And that's the one thing that is probably allowing this to go through. Usually when you get tall grass like that, it's not gonna be super thick. 
First time I went through bagging, it was mediocre at best. The thick grass plugged up the chute a little bit and it started mulching more than it started bagging. So I moved over and tried another section that was a little thicker, but not as tall. And in some cases it was maybe taller, but to a point uh, it worked excellent there as it started to pick everything up and didn't plug. So the issue here is in normal cases, if you were gonna bag, this thing's gonna do excellent. If you're just cutting off an inch or two of grass, it's gonna bag no issue. You get up into the four and five inches, you might get it plugging up a little bit or it's not gonna fill that bag completely. But again, worst case scenario, it had zero issue doing it and it bagged it. If you did start to see it coming out in, uh, especially it started coming out in the front, once it plugged itself up a little bit, you could stop unplug the bag and keep moving on. Realistically, the bag needed to be empty at that point. It was a little over half full, but with that long of grass, those long blades stop everything from going in. Cut quality is where it shines. I guess as far as runtime, in a worst case scenario, that's where the DeWalt mowers have always been lagging behind a little bit. My suggestion with this is if you have FlexVolt batteries, I would install them in here. They have zero issue fitting, and I think it will help with two things. Runtime would be huge. It would drastically increase that runtime. And second, thermally, these 10 amp hour batteries, when you're done coming out after 22 minutes or even after 10 minutes of mowing, they're warm. So the FlexVolt battery has three levels of cells in it. It would spread the amperage draw over those and they would probably run a lot cooler. Starting this mower is very simple. There's a large paddle switch up front. You push that down and then pull back the bale. And you can see it just by pulling back on the self-drive mode, it will turn the front tires together. In Having a front wheel drive mower is interesting because if you want to hold this in position and hold everything back and push or, or just let it go and do its thing, if you want to go to a corner, you can lift it up. It will stop driving and spin it around and you can adjust it to a point as far as speed in a corner that way rather than having to slow down or let off the self propulsion because of the rear drive and it works. Now the mode or way of adjusting the speed is actually hidden in the back and it's really kind of awkward, but this is more of one of set it and forget it. So this drive button that's back here is just a little dial. You can push it forward or back to get your speed correct. So I'm 6'3-ish, a little over, and this is in its lowest position. So this handle curves up here. And it's very comfortable for me in its low position. There are two positions that you can put this in. Its upper position actually feels a little high for me. And I think it would just be something that you're gonna get used to. It would depend on the area that you're in. It wouldn't be hard to move this around in this way, but I've always mowed with it in the lower position as it just felt more comfortable. So if you're shorter, if you could picture this, uh, this handle could be just a touch tall for you. Since your two batteries are actually inside this case and you cannot see the fuel gauge on them, there is a red light back here that will let you know when the batteries are dead or if you have an overload. This is your 10 amp hour 20 volt battery. And as we said, you can easily fit any of the large flex volt batteries in here and you still have room to put your hand underneath, and get them out. So to me, these batteries are still warm after being used and they were not used long. They still show a full charge. And I think that's going to be the bigger issue with this unit is thermally, you're going to really heat up these battery cells due to the amperage draw and it will lessen their life. So if you're gonna buy this and think you're gonna put two five amp hour batteries in here, you're wrong. It, you can probably do it. It'll probably lessen the power that output uh, but it'll also probably ruin your batteries really fast due to the heat that's going to be created from the amperage draw and you're not going to be really thrilled with the cut quality. So from this 10 amp hour 
is probably the least I'd use. I would try to move up to a nine or a 12 amp hour flex volt. If you look at the size, you can see there is a one cell layer difference in these two. The flex volt completely covers the other 20 volt. It's definitely a nice battery pack here, but it is a minimum of what I'd use for this mower. Adjusting the cut height on this mower is simple and is only done on one side, which would be your right hand side. You have six different settings here. I have it on six at this point. I was mowing most of the time at five. You have to set the front wheel and then you have to set the rear wheel also. The front wheel is numbered one through six. The rear, you're gonna have to actually do some math and count. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six for its settings. Just make sure they're set the same. Unlike many other mowers on the market, there's not a lot of pieces to this. So if you wanna do a side discharge, it's as simple as that. You're ready to rock and roll. If you would like to bag, there is no mulch plug. So the mulch plug is integrated into this lift area in the back. You just set your bag in place. Let it close over top and you're set to bag. If you just want to mulch, drop that plug, don't install anything up front and you're ready to rock and roll. Storing this guy is simple. There are quarter turn knobs here that open this up to adjustment for your two positions. You can just push them all the way forward, lock them into the storage position, lift this guy up and it can easily set straight up and down since there's no fuel or oil in this and you have no issue. Now let's come in and take a look at the bottom of this and we'll give you a little bit more information on the blade. In typical fashion, an electric or battery operated mower will have a typically a thinner blade. You can see this blade has a little bit of a different angle here and more lift out at the end, which the lift for this is actually quite well for most battery operated mowers, but I will say that this is a fairly thin blade. You can see I'm bending it. That's not a big deal. It's more for efficiency, but what you need to do with this blade is keep it sharp and it's going to cut on two levels. It's going to cut low here and high as you get to the center. So make sure you're sharpening this starting from here and going out. Blade design is excellent on this. It's nice to see you have two cutting heights, so it helps to get this grass cut up in smaller pieces. And as far as cleaning this deck, just don't spray anything directly into this area behind the mower. But other than that, you can power wash this off, clean it just like you would a normal mower. Now with the self-drive system, it is a solid axle that's going through here. So these two tires are gonna turn together at all periods of time. Also, you can see there's some resistance here as to me pushing this. This does not like let off, there's always gonna be resistance on this even if you're not um, using the self propulsion. So just pushing this lawnmower is not fun because you're always pushing against this motor that's up front. So I would recommend you not getting a self drive mower if you're not gonna constantly use the self drive system. These days we see it more and more with companies protecting themselves. There is a key down at the bottom without this little key. You cannot run the mower. That might be very important for you. Uh, it does have a place on the end so you can put a tether or a key ring or something on it. Normally that would have a little rope on it so it would kind of dangle or you could attach it to something. But if you ever have trouble starting this, that key is not in place. Now let's go over some of the hits and misses on this unit. And one of the first ones that I'm gonna just go as a complete miss is the fact that there is resistance on this mower when I go to push it without the self-drive mode on. And that's kind of a bummer, but not a huge deal, not as big of a deal as this. If my batteries are dead, or even if they're not dead and I want to turn this unit on and just use the self propulsion to get me out to somewhere, I can't. There's no way to turn this unit on and have the self propulsion run without the mower blade running. So even if the batteries die and the mower blade won't turn on, the self propulsion won't turn on so I can't get back. So I think that is one of the things that would be a nice add on for this because if I'm stuck out, my batteries are dead and I'm on the back corner of uh, the lot, even though your lot might not be that big, you're gonna push against resistance the whole way back to get back and charge your batteries. Two, 
These are 10 amp hour batteries and uh, this does not come with a fast charger. It actually comes with two smaller chargers and those two smaller chargers take a good amount of time to charge up this unit. It would have been nice if DeWalt would have thrown a nice two battery fast charging unit there so you could have charged both batteries at the same time and turned around. But with that said, by the time you're done mowing with this in the battery's discharge, the batteries are warm enough that they will thermally not charge right away anyways. So it takes you about three hours for the batteries to cool down and then charge back up in the current situation. So that's not unlike some of the larger voltage battery packs out there that we have seen where they get warm and then they have to cool down and charge back up really slow. Uh, so in this case, it's nice to have something that might be DeWalt. If your other tools are DeWalt and you have more batteries, if you need to finish something, you can throw them in. And that's where the FlexVolt batteries will really shine because they won't get as warm and don't thermally cut out or time out when you go to charge them again. Big plus if you're using flex volts on this. So I guess that's the other thing to me. I look at, I like that I have a 20 volt mower, but DeWalt has their flex volt line out. It would be nice if they offer this with two flex volt batteries as an upgrade. I realize everything is gonna get more expensive, more expensive and more expensive as this is already $499. But what I do like about this is how it's built. This steel deck down here is very solid. While most of the plastic decks out there work great, and I really have very little to say about most of them, their quality, I like the fact that I have steel if I'm going to be working in a ditch bank or if I'm going to be working in different areas. And speaking of ditch bank, this unit has the power to cut them where most of the plastic uh, deck ones really don't. They'll flex, they'll move around, and it just doesn't work out that well. So this reminds me more of a, a solid duty mower that I'm happy to have that works well. Another, I guess, miss to me is this is the lowest setting that this handle will go at. So if you're shorter and you drop down a little bit, it might feel a little bit tall for you. And that surprises me because most of the time we're always wishing these were up a little bit more. Uh, but in this case, uh, you just have to take a judgment call again, a uh, little over 6.3, and this is its lowest setting. Having the self-propulsion in the front wheels. If you're bagging, that can be a little bit of a bummer as you almost have to push or lift a little bit sometimes to get the front wheels to grab, especially if you're on very bumpy ground like we were. So it's nice and it's also a hindrance. It depends on what you're doing. When this bag and back is full, your self-propulsion wheels up front are just floating sometimes, so they're not really getting a lot of grip. And that leads me to another miss to a point is that the drive speed is underneath here, semi-hidden. Not that it's a big deal because you can use your other hand, get it underneath, but it's not as easy as many of them that are out where it's just sitting in the back and you can move it forward and back. Again, I said set this up as set it and forget it and I fully agree with that. You don't need to mess with it most times, especially since you can't use it when you're actually going between different places. You have to be physically mowing, so I sort of understand what they're doing. As far as hits on this, you know, I seem to be bagging on a lot of things, but I really like the cut quality of it. I really like the blade design. I like that it has a steel deck. I like that they have the flex volt batteries out that I can put in here. I wish it came with them, uh, but at least it's got the storage capacity to keep them or hold them in place. Realistically, good design, decent price. Compared to what you see out there right now, there are a lot of different higher priced mowers that don't have the quality of this one and don't have a lot of the features that this one has. Like many battery operated mowers, I wish they would move these wheels in slightly. They match up exactly with the deck, but the deck has a little lip on it. So the wheels are still sitting about a eighth, maybe, well, <clears throat> the wheels are probably sitting realistically three eighths inch outside the blade. So you need to, overlap the wheel marks a little bit where I'd rather have it so I could set one wheel on and still have a half inch overlap and I'd have a nice looking lawn rather than wheels that are kind of offset and it doesn't allow me to get that straight nice cutting line. This will not 
stripe your lawn. If you're going to ask, not many battery operated mowers will, but we seem to get that question often. There's a lot to take in here. Um, the quick five second thing. It's a great mower, has its limitations on runtime in heavy grass, but it will cut it. So if I compare that to most other ones that are out there, I'll tell you that uh, they have some good runtime if uh, you're not cutting heavy grass and they won't cut the heavy grass that this one will. So there's always that power to runtime issue that we run into. I would suggest this if you're in the DeWalt battery line, have some larger batteries, grab onto this guy, enjoy the cut quality, enjoy a fairly good priced mower that's built well. Again, guys, love to hear your comments and all this stuff at the bottom. Thanks for sticking with me through all this video. I tried to hit the important stuff in the front and give you a little more tips to the buying stuff in the back. We appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. Have a great day.